In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the Ember Saturday of September, with the commemoration of St. Linus, first successor to St. Peter, and martyr. He is named daily in the canon of the Mass. And of St. Thecla, whom the Greeks honor as the proto-martyr, the first martyr of the female sex, although she was like St. John, tradition tells us, not actually uh, finally put to death, but rather, as we commemorate in the prayers for the dying, she was delivered <coughs> by our Lord from three most grievous torments. And thus, in the Western Church, she is invoked as one of the patron saints of the dying. St. Linus is uh, known as having performed exorcisms and driven out devils, including for the daughter of the emperor, who ungratefully then proceeded to persecute and finally put St. Linus to death. And he's also known for enforcing the apostolic obligation that a woman should have her hair covered in the church. One considers that it is found in sacred scripture and from, uh, from St. Paul and from the second of the popes. And consider that today women won't even think of, of, of doing those things. And even in supposedly traditional chapels in German-speaking countries in Europe, uh, they will not obey this rule. It's a very sad thing indeed. Truly, as St. Paul says, a disrespect to uh, the angels. We might look upon uh, St. Linus with this a particular prescription as um, uh, addressing the woman in today's gospel, a woman who is bent down to the earth. It is an illness, our Lord says, that the devil put upon her. That's why we bless the sick and we pray for them. One of the reasons, so that should this affliction be not from God but from the devil, they, they may indeed be delivered. To be bent down to earth, the fathers say, that symbolizes the soul being concerned only with earthly and passing things. But we are meant to be able to look up to God. So to that would be symbolic if a woman is vain or too concerned about personal appearance, then she would never be able to look up to God. But when we come to Mass, we must look up and see our God. You see how beautiful and how sensible this all is in tradition and sacred scripture, which of course the Church today still faithfully and perfectly observes. In today's Gospel, in addition to the um, story of the um, woman who was uh, bent over and could not look up, we have our Lord telling a parable, our Lord comparing himself to the dresser of the vineyard, in other words, to the gardener. Our Lord who comes, um, uh, the fathers say, and he uh, three times for mankind from heaven to look for some fruit in the vineyard. Before uh, the law, during the time of the Old Testament law, and now during the time of grace. And he still sees in mankind no fruit. And yet, such is the patience of the sacred heart that he comes yet again another time and he digs around us and he puts a little fertilizer on and he waits some more to give us a chance finally to bear some fruit. We salute the patience of Almighty God today. And we thank the mercies of the Sacred Heart through Our Lady, which are truly without number for each one of us. Now the Ember Day has as its specific object to thank God for the graces of the fall harvest, to prepare for this new season of the year, and to beg that there be a plentiful harvest of souls by means of the ordination of priests, which used to take place during the, the Ember Day Mass. Remember that this Mass long as it is, is a shortened form of the Mass that was used for centuries in Rome for the Panutris service, the all-night vigil of prayer, which ended only at the dawn of Sunday. And during this vigil, priests, as I say, uh, and, uh, and bishops would receive the sacrament of holy orders. The early lessons in today's Mass, there are five lessons that precede the epistle, have to do with the ancient Jewish law, the Old Testament. And then that leads us into the uh, epistle in which St. Paul speaks about some of the furnishings of the temple and of the sanctuary in the Old Testament. And 
lessons speak to about uh, the Sabbath and the different fasts. Uh, the, the purpose of the church in doing so is to uh, tell us that now all of these things are fulfilled. Because the church has always had to try to exist in the midst of an unbelieving people, that is to say, the Jews, who frequently persecute her, the church then considers it prudent that we Catholics not forget that we are the true remnant of Israel, the true descendants or children of Abraham, and that all of these Old Testament writings, ceremonies, prophecies, and observances of the law were meant to prepare the way for our Lord. And they are all part of our heritage. So then, today, if you see the Jews observing this or that feast, it's their feast day of the new year, uh, this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, then they should always make us think of the true fulfillment in our blessed Savior. So the church does this so that we don't, as most Christians today, unfortunately, are deceived by heresy and get into sort of a mindset expressed by the phrase Judeo-Christian heritage which is a, a lie and a blasphemy. It's only a Christian heritage. All of these things, the church is saying, are ours and are now perfectly fulfilled. And now then at this season of the year, the season of fall and the season of harvest, we, we recall these truths. We thank God for his patience over so many centuries. And as I say, we thank our Lord for his patience with our own immortal souls. Today is the day on which uh, a very holy priest, the only priest who ever received the stigmata, died in 1968, uh, Padre Pio. And I thought, I came across in my spiritual reading this morning uh, a little something that he wrote. He wrote very beautiful and very practical little admonitions about bringing forth fruit. And because that is certainly the spirit of the church on this ember Saturday, I thought I would read to you just a little excerpt from one of, of the letters that he wrote. Also, it has to do with driving away the devil and temptation. When disturbing thoughts come into your mind, drive them away as temptations, for this is what they really are. Say to yourself at once, I am conceited, I am loaded with sins. I am a profaner of the temple, namely my soul, which Jesus has entrusted to my care. I rebel against the divine inspirations. I am really wicked. Yet this soil brings forth these fruits. If I have not lived well in the past, I intend to live well in the future with the divine assistance. Then take your minds off these disturbing and tormenting thoughts. Open your hearts with boundless confidence to the Holy One who is able to console and save us. Have no fear for the future, for God is with you and he is supremely faithful and will not allow you to be overwhelmed by our enemy. This divine lover will never allow a soul that is consecrated to him in a most particular way to remain a victim of the most implacable of all its enemies. No, no, the enemy will never obtain this victory. Remember that your soul is in the arms of your divine spouse like a baby in its mother's arms. You may sleep in peace, therefore, for this heavenly spouse will guide you in the way which is to your greatest advantage. So on the one hand, when it comes to fruits, we confess to our Lord, because of the bad soil of my soul, I haven't brought forth much in the way of good fruit, only all of these sins and vices. But on the other hand, I take my mind off of that, and I put my mind instead upon our Lord's immense love for me. Remember, if you have a hard time meditating, or if you have a hard time with confidence in our Lord, you should make yourself at least meditate for five minutes a day, under the guidance of the Holy Ghost, with that one picture in mind that Padre Pio draws. Remember that your soul is in the arms of your divine spouse, like a baby in its mother's arms. You may sleep in peace, this is the spiritual Sabbath that is the heritage of a Christian. A day, today's Mass tells us, of joy and of rejoicing and a very great refreshment and of rest. This is offered to us every day in the new dispensation of grace. You may sleep in peace, therefore, for this heavenly spouse will guide you in the way which is to your greatest advantage. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost.